Okay, good evening, everyone. And we will be, we'll be continuing our study in the prayer of Thanksgiving of Canna. And uh, let's pray before we begin. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight and we want to lift up your name. We ask that you would guide us, you would strengthen us. I ask that during this time that you would be glorified, that we would really understand that you are the judge of all the earth and that your judgment is not uh, discriminate, your judgment is not uh, random, but you judge in knowledge. You are a God of knowledge, Father. And so as we study these deep truths, I pray that you would um, first and foremost transform our hearts, change our hearts, Father God, soften our hearts as even though we, we now have the Holy Spirit, sometimes we wander, sometimes we, we, we struggle to see, to see reality, Father. I just pray that you would guide us by your spirit. I pray that you give us understanding. Help us to grow in our prayer life. Help us to grow in our talking with you. And we ask also that we want to hear from you tonight. Speak to us through your word. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, by faith alone. Amen. Okay. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Let us go to... If you have not yet turned in your Bibles, please turn in it to 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. We'll be finishing our, well, I hope to finish. Maybe, maybe we'll still have a little bit left on Thursday to finish. But I, I was studying Hannah's prayer today more, and I just really was, there's so much information here. So my, my hope is that we'll, we might just have, I might just go over a final outline if we don't finish it tonight on Thursday before we go on. Um, did anyone have a chance to read or to interact with Hannah's prayer the, over, over the week, the weekend? Did anyone have that chance? It's fine if you did it. Okay, let me, uh, let me get in there. Okay, so everyone can see that. All right, let's just go ahead. I want to read the prayer again. And then what we'll do is we'll just work through this prayer like we've done before, break it apart, discuss it. There were some questions asked last week. And I have the, the questions here. They're saved. So I have them there. And let's go ahead and read this, the prayer, and then we'll, we'll work through it. And there are some really profound truths here. And I had taught this in 2000. 2017, I taught this prayer and just so much came back that I had forgotten. So let's go ahead and read the word of the Lord. And Hannah prayed and said, My heart exalts in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth derides my enemies. Because I rejoice in your salvation, there is none holy like the Lord. For there is none besides you. There is no rock like our God. Talk no more so very proudly. Let not arrogance come from your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty are broken. The feeble bind on strength, or gird, gird on strength, gird up strength. Those who were full have hired themselves out for bread, but those who were hungry have ceased to hunger. The barren have borne seven, but she who has many children is forlorn. The Lord kills and the Lord brings to life. He brings down to Sheol and rises up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low and exalts. He raises up the poor from the dust. He lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes and inherit a seat of honor. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and on them he has set the world. He will guard the feet of his faithful ones, but the wicked shall be cut off in darkness. For not by might shall a man prevail. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Against them he will thunder in heaven. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. So, so powerful. I... I 
when you read that, it's just sometimes I get goosebumps. <laughs> Let's, let's go back and look here. And before we go in and start explaining, does anyone have, we had some comments and observations. Let me just review some of the things that we've already said. Maybe something new came to your mind. And if you had a new question or you had a new observation, we can, you can ask it before we go into it. And just the questions that we want to investigate is what is the meaning and significance of the word horn? So that was Ray's question. Number two, investigate the word concept of rock in the Old and New Testament. So that was, that was one of my questions. Uh, number three, is it okay to deride our enemies? <laughs> is it okay to deride our enemies? <laughs> and then observations. Uh, one observation was made that there was no petition offered. This was just a prayer of thanksgiving praise uh, to the Lord. God's sovereign control and activity is highlighted, that he is the one doing all the action. And you really see that there, and, and we'll, we'll discuss that further. There's a contrast between strength and the weakness of his enemies. So there's a clear contrast. There's a lot of contrasts, actually, throughout the, the, the prayer. The Lord is the righteous judge of humanity. Very profound, very profound observation. And the more you study the prayer that actually is the key to the whole prayer so henry gets the gold star <laughs> that was henry's uh, observation and, and that really is the key uh we'll, we'll look at that and maybe you disagree maybe there's another and so you know of course that that'd be my interpretation but i think i think i can i think it will become clear and number five the messiah is mentioned or alluded to and that's mentioned in anointed one rock salvation so let's go ahead. First, firstly, does anyone want to make an additional comment? Does anyone, does anyone want to ask a question? So what I'll do is I'll, I'll finish verse one, and then maybe we, we can just take turns, each person choosing a passage to practice through, because this is what we should all be doing. I do want to make a quick, I want to make a quick uh, a note to the handout. Uh, this is the handout that we looked at before, if you can recall. I posted a new one. And so this, was, this, this first tab is just an overview of the different types of analysis, the different types of steps and analysis we can do as we move from observing the text to actually applying the text, moving from observation to, to application. And then... Here, we looked at a, a grammatical relationships key, and these are just relationships within a sentence that we want to identify to help us really to draw out significance, to help us to better understand what, what, the, what, the, what is being said. And again, these are just categories to help us draw significance, okay? It's not strictly gram uh, uh, grammatical. Really, the issue is you have Hebrew grammar and English grammar, and then you have translation, and, and they're trying to juggle two different grammars. And so actually, most, most uh, Bibles a lot of times are grammatically incorrect English because they're, maybe they're trying to do, make the emphasis uh, from an from a original language perspective. So when I say grammatical stru relationship structure, it's not strict. We're, we're juggling two grammars. <laughs> Hebrew, Greek, Aramaic, and then English, or if you were studying in Tagalog or or Warbay Warbay. And then one one other one other tab I added here that it's there, but I didn't really discuss is this tab, which we've been doing is this should be sentence relationships key. Okay, sentence relationships key. Can everyone see that there? We've looked at the actor, the verb object, adjectival relationship, the verbal relationships, and then this, this, the sentence relationship key is focusing on at the sentence level. How can we describe, how can we summarize what the sentence is doing, okay? Now, a lot of times it's almost the same as what the verb is doing because the verb is the fundamental characteristic, okay? But sometimes it's different, all right? And then, and then the, 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 the furthest most relationship, if you can look over inter-sentence relationships is once we understand what, how a sentence, what a sentence is, you have two sentences, 
Now we're looking at relationships between sentences. And really it's at this level where you, 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 form, your, you form your outline. Okay, so uh, you can look at that your own time. It makes sense. Again, these are just categories for types of sentences. So you're just going to pick what logically best fits. What type of sentence is this? Many times, several categories would fit. So, um, so it's not a, a black and white issue. There's disagreement. I'm just giving you categories to help you to think, uh, uh, to, 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 to come to a conclusion. What type of sentence is this? Okay, so you have types of sentences is the first major set of categories. And then um, sentence, what kind of sentence relationships are there between sentences? Again, uh, sometimes it's purely logic. Sometimes they're connected by conjunctions. That would be a functional relationship. And then a lot of times it's just logic. What logically fits? And we're operating off the presupposition that there is, that language is logical. It makes sense. It's not illogical when we're speaking, when we're communicating. There's, there's a logic so that communication can occur. And so, again, th these relationships are just to help us really draw a conclusion. Okay, so that's a new tab that we really didn't study. I hope one day that to, to fill in this plot trace. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add different, different analysis tools. I'll just add them in tabs. And so my hope is, is as we're studying or you're working wherever it is on your tablet, on a piece of paper, you can have access to these different types of analysis. They, are, they have each one, some of these analysis, they're in like, in like a chapter in a book. And I'm trying to really bring it down to a precise level to where we can just really use it with ease. So I just wanted to, to make you aware of that. Um, maybe we'll come back here and kind of interact with that. So, all right, let's go back to the text. A any questions first? We're okay? You okay? Okay, all right. Let's go to the text. And I'm gonna say right now that I wrestled with these next two sentences, trying to understand the precise grammatical structures and trying to think through this. So I made a decision on what I think they are. I could, ch <laughs> could change, <laughs> I could change. Um, I was looking at the Hebrew structure. I, the decision I've kept, come down to, I feel pretty good about. But I just want to tell you that sometimes it's not black and white. And so maybe later you hear me talking, my head is fair and it's different. Like Tim, you said something different. I'm like, okay, you know, I changed my mind. So there's, when we're doing uh, biblical interpretation, there's always a science, there's a science and an art. There, it's, it's objective and at the same time, sometimes it's, it's gray. So let me just go ahead and highlight the, uh, the, the, the structures here. So we have... Um, the, the verb exalts, exalts, and I'm identifying that as an action. And then we have the subject. And, and I just went with, again, so this is where I was wrestling, like, um, I just, my heart, my heart, okay, my heart. And I'm just, I'm essentially bringing, uh, Hannah into this because in the in the Hebrew mind the heart was the the heart was like the mind for a Hebrew okay so it's the it's the thing the, the place where uh, emotions and thinking occurs okay so I'm just I'm understanding this to be essentially Hannah's hand I mean it's Hannah's heart. So Hannah, Hannah is the one in, in maybe if you want to say mind in, in her emotions and in her inner being is the one exalting. And then, and then it says here uh, in the Lord. Okay. In the Lord. I went, I went back and forth on this, on this uh, function here. And I, I ended up identifying it as an ad, ad, adverb, adverbial. I was going back and forth with object object because she's she's uh the, the exalting is like is is almost like the the exalted it's it's to be to be um just uh excessively happy excessive joy excessive joy okay so it's 
there's a, so, so, so the decision I made here was this is a sphere, okay? In the sphere. And you say, what is, what is a sphere? Sphere is like in the realm. So if you want to, if you want to understand this as the realm, the realm. So she's ex exceedingly joyful in, in the sphere or the realm of the Lord, in, in the Lord. And the reason why I wrestled, because I, because I thought about for a while, I thought about for a while um, this idea of object. I thought about that. And it's for, for her joy is, is focused at the Lord, the object, okay? So I was like, yes, I'm going to choose object. But then I was thinking, but her joy is also focused at the Lord's actions. So it's more than just the Lord as an object. It's also his actions. So it's, you know, the, the person of the Lord, the work of the Lord. Um, you even see the salvation of the Lord. Um, and then even, even, even um, uh, the, 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 there's, a, there's a sense in which, in which the Lord is faithful. So there... You could identify it as object, but I felt the realm of God is bigger. The realm of God is bigger than the Lord himself. It fundamentally includes the Lord, but, but it includes his work. It includes his, his, uh, his character. So that's why I went with sphere, okay? I don't know if that's making sense. Um, have, we, have we discussed the word and, the first word? And. Oh, I am sorry. Yes, I forgot and. about that. Okay, and. Okay, and. and. Because and has something to do with the exaltation in the Lord. Okay, yes. Okay, so, so, um, <coughs> do you want to read the previous verse? Therefore, also I have lent him to the Lord as long as he liveth. He shall be lent to the Lord, and he worship the Lord there. It's uh, that's King James version. Yeah. And for NLB, it says, "So now I give him to the Lord, for his whole life he will be given over to the Lord, and he worship the Lord there." So there's something. There's a situation. Or situation here for Hannah. For Hannah, yes, she was asking. Uh, okay, in Hannah was she was barren. She yes, yeah, she was barren. Yes, yes, she barren. She so she was she was asking for for a child, and she promised it. She will dedicate it to the Lord. Yes. and the life of her husband Eli. Uh, her husband, uh, her husband is Eli is the priest. Elkanah, uh, Eli is the priest. Yeah, El 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 Kana El Kana is the is her husband. Yes. El Kana, her okay. El Kana, Hana, okay. El Kana, then El Kana, her husband sent her Hana. Okay, okay. Eli was the priest. Okay. Eli has children. They serve as assistant or yeah. sacristan to Eli, yes. but they were uh, unfaithful to the Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yes. In, in, so there was in chapter one, okay, okay, I did not read the entire picture of, I was not able to get the entire picture of the life of Hannah, why yeah. she was bitter. Something is in her. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna. Okay. I, I have some highlights here. I was gonna wait until. So I was gonna. Henry's stealing my thunder, which is good. Um. Uh. Because we're discussing the. She's deriding her enemies. It, she talks about talk no more so very proudly. Do not let arrogance come. So she's talking just about someone, as she prays to God. So I just went back and I was looking at. Let me just read some of these things. So, so what Henry is really getting to is really good. Okay, so so the story goes that uh, there's there's a man. He has two wives, and the one wife is barren, the other wife is not, and 
Um, and so, um, uh, Penina is the one who uh, does not have, uh, she has a lot of children. Hannah has no ch children, okay? And then it talks about, like you're saying, Hophni and Phinehas, they, they, they were the sons of Eli, but they were bad, okay? They were bad, like you're saying, all right? So then, so then uh, um, uh, her, it says here in verse 6, her rival, which is the rival of, of Hannah, used... I'm sorry, what is that? It's, it's this other wife. Yeah, the rival. The rival is the other wife, and she, and and it says her her rival used to provoke her grievously to irritate her because the Lord had closed her womb. So it's the Lord's decision to close Hannah's womb. Okay, and we see this in the prayer. We're going to see this in the prayer later, but yet. The rival is provoking. She's evil. She's provoking Hannah. She's trying to make fun of Hannah as if it was Hannah's fault. Okay? Um, and then it repeats in verse 7. She used to provoke her. Um, uh, um, and then in verse, verse 10, uh, Hannah goes and, and she's, she, she prayed to the Lord. She, went, she wept bitterly. She's asking for uh, a child. And, um, and then... Um, she's accused of being drunk because of her, because she's, she's in the, in, in the, in the, in the, in the place of worship, but she was speaking in her heart. And then when Eli realizes what's going on, he says, okay, the Lord will grant your petition. Okay. And so that's, I mean, there's a lot more there, but that's kind of the context. And so then we, we have what Henry's bringing out. So, so that's where Hannah is, um, I wouldn't say bitter, but she's really struggling. She's really struggling. Um, and, and then the Lord answers the prayer. And then, and, then, and then you have this, she answers the petition. She's already prayed for the petition. So this is a prayer of thanksgiving after the answered prayer. Okay. So, so, uh, Henry bringing out the and is very important. And so what is this relationship here? What is, what is the relationship here? Now, you could, you could say that this is, you could, there's several possibilities, all right? You could say this is a progression because it's building off of looking at what Henry said. Therefore, I've lent him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he is lent to the Lord. And he worshiped the Lord there. And then, and Hannah prayed, okay? So it's just building one after another. So you could say this is a progression. Or you could say that this is an inference in the sense that this is, in the sense that this is the, this is the effect of the cause and the cause is the answered prayer i mean yeah the, the petition being answered okay so you could say that this is the inference or an effect the effect the response you could say effect you could say response you know there's I'm, what i'm trying to say is there's different ways of understanding this but they're all really connected they're almost the same the, the response and the response would be up here would be uh Answered, answered petition to the Lord. Okay. So th this is like the preceding context. If it's going, going up, what's the response? What's Hannah's response to the answered petition? She prays and she exalts. In the Lord. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Henry. That re really good, really good connection there. And I forgot to make that connection. So I really appreciate that. Although we were going to study about what I just shared. So the cat's out of the bag. <laughs> it's there now. So we have a, a context. This is really important why when we read and we have a question, we can go to the preceding context, we can go to the succeeding context, and typically our question will be answered. Uh, the biblical writers are very good at making connections. Okay, uh, Henry, go ahead. 
verse chapter 1 verse 16 chapter 1 verse 16 do not take your servant for a wicked woman oh. i have been praying here out of my great anguish and grief and grief from that eli answered her go in peace and may the god of israel grant you what you have asked of him then she said in verse 18, May your servant find favor in your eyes. Then she went away and ate something, and her face was no longer downcast. So, even this, it was faith. Faith in yes. everything. So, mm, from there, and mm, Hannah prayed. No, that's, let me, I need a, do I have a pen here? I want to put that in there. That's really good. Now, there's, you're, you're dead on correct that, this, that, that there, there's faith here because she's been praying. Eli says, your petition will be granted, and then her, it changes. So I think she, she trusted in the word that was given to her. That's really good. So faith here. Let me just add this to my, to my Bible. Does everyone see that? Everyone tracking there, Danny and Ray? This is a, a reason, too, why when people talk about, this is so important, and I'm glad that Henry brought this up. In the Old Testament, they'll say, Old Testament is, is works and law, works, law, salvation. New Testament is grace and faith. But really, it's faith in the Old Testament, and you see it. If you really look carefully, there's different ways of saying faith. Um, but this is faith. I mean, this is, she is trusting to the promise that was given to her by the prophet of God. Remember, Eli is the priest and prophet of God. He is the one who communicates with God. We must always understand, Samuel was a prophet and a priest. Okay, they, they are, a prophet is just someone who, who speaks on behalf of God and communicates to God on behalf of the people. Okay, all right, great. Any other comments or, 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 or um, questions there? Really good discussion. Excellent. Go ahead. Yeah, I just had a thought in my mind. mind uh, given the closeness of Eli, uh, Eli to God, how come his children turn out to be bad? I always think that. <laughs> I, I, have a, I have an answer. I have an answer. I have an answer for it. I don't know if you want to hear it. Go ahead. <laughs> the, for, for Eli, the ministry, his focus is on the ministry and not on his family. And people in ministry, their focus is so much on the ministry. They, they, they sacrifice. I have the saying, uh, I will not sacrifice my family on the altar of ministry. And he sacrificed his family on the altar of ministry, most, most likely. You know, notice his children were, 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 were priests. They, they were there. They were part of his ministry, but he was not, he was not pouring into them. He was not holding them accountable. Teaching. He wasn't teaching. Yeah. He, Bethany said, can you share? He wasn't teaching them the word. Yeah. <laughs> he wasn't there for them. Yeah. Good. Great question. Okay. Let's, let's, uh, any further, we're going to go along here. Um, so, so, uh, coming back to this question. Um, let, let, let me add here then. So this is, a uh, um, faithful God, uh, the Lord was faithful and to his, to, to, to and he answered, he's the, he's the, he's the God who answers prayer. Um, so that's why I, I, in the Lord is more than just the Lord himself. There's other components to it. Okay. So, and, and this exalt, let's just use another word for, for this exalt. You can say um, um, exceedingly. Joyful. I'm going to piggyback Kuya Henry. The other, the other reason that we know that Hannah is a woman full of faith, is that he, he, she lends her son 
to God the rest of his life. And she is exceedingly joyful. <laughs> there is so much faith there. Her relationship is so close with the Lord. No problem, no arguing, no bartering with God. I lend him to life, for life, you know. Uh, so that's, that's, that's just an a additional there. Okay, let's, let's move on here. The next, the next we have is, uh, the next we have is my horn is exalted in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the, 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 the Lord. So uh, again, going, looking at, ver at verbs first, I see the verb of exalted action. And then this horn. <laughs> Did anyone look up this idea of horn? Henry. It's uh, the strength, the strength and power. Yes, okay. So what it signifies, but but did you look up what it literally, what it, the horn literally, what the image is? Did, were you, did you, do you know what that is, Henry? The, the literal uh, connection. The horn is... The horn, it's uh, it's uh, it's the horn of an animal that yes. is used as a container, and sometimes uh, usually it's also used as a mu musical instrument. Okay, yeah, okay, so it's not now. There's debate here, okay? So we're not, and I, this is my misunderstanding. So I did some research too. I was thinking of it being like a musical instrument, and it could be maybe she's lifting it up to play, it could be, um, but the other, the the other, uh, because the, con the connection is also, the connection also is, um, there's a connection here, okay? So uh, th the other possibility is the horn is like an, is like an animal, okay? Uh, like a goat, probably bigger in the US, we have bulls. And so when the bull is like marking its territory and it's very prideful, the animal is very prideful, it lifts its head up and prances around, okay? <laughs> and so, and so um, the sense would be the horn, which signifies power and strength. Hannah's horn is lifted. She, she's exalting it up, okay? So, so. Oh, that thing, would that uh, refer to be her, you're like the self-esteem, something like that. Her esteem, yeah, you're okay. So, yeah, so we could say, we could say here, uh, we could say, um, horn is, uh, let me just, so horn is an animal, an animal, uh, I'm just going to put uh, prancing. Uh, this is, this is signifying, uh, you could say esteem or really boasting, boasting. Now, we might cringe for a minute at like, okay, well, Hannah, why are you getting boastful? Why, why are you boastful, Hannah? This is the Lord's work. It's not you, okay? But, but, look at, but look at the qualification. This is why every part of speech is so important. Is her boasting in herself? No. The boasting is in the Lord. And again, I'm going to identify it as the sphere of the Lord because... Her boasting is more than the Lord Himself. It's again in. It's again in. Um, it's all of these. Okay. It's the person. It's the work. It's the salvation that comes. It's the Lord's salvation that He brings. It's His faithfulness. Okay. So she, so she is she is being prideful and boasting <laughs> in the Lord. Okay. Now, is this biblical? <laughs> this is biblical. Here we go. I got two passages of scripture. The clearest I'm going to go to is, let's turn our Bibles to uh, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, and verse 26. So we're told never to, to, you know, we're not to be prideful and we're not to boast. Let's go ahead and let's read 
uh, I'm going to read this for us. And um, is is what Hannah's actions appropriate? And should we should we uh, um, should we be prideful? Should we be boastful? But listen to this. For consider your calling, brothers. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. And God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what was low and despised in the world, even the things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are. This sounds a little bit similar to, to, Hannah's, to Hannah's prayer. Not that Paul is quoting the prayer, but Paul is teaching the same theology, okay? Watch. Uh, um, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. And because of him, because of God, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption. <laughs> so that, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. So H Hannah is doing exactly what should be done. She has seen the Lord work. She has put all her faith and trust in the Lord fulfilling this petition. And then in her prayer, she is boasting. She's boasting in the Lord. That's my God. This is what the Lord does for me. Not in herself, not in her own actions, not what she's done. She doesn't go there and say, I was at the temple every day for one month and the Lord answered my prayer. <laughs> no credit, okay? Let, let's, now, I'm in a different program, but Step Bible has the same. I'm, I'm using this because it's a little bit easier to see. Step Bible is really um, um, a little jumpy. So, so, so Step Bible has the same type of option, but, but if you look here, if you can see that I'm clicking on this W, this W here, this is, uh, I look down here, uh, there's two more quotations, 2 Corinthians 10, 17, and Jeremiah 23 and 24. So let's go to Jeremiah, let's go to Jeremiah 9, Jeremiah 9, in verse 23 and 24. Thus says the Lord, let not the wise man boast in his wisdom, let not the mighty man boast in his might, let not the rich man boast in his riches, but let him who boasts, boast in this. This is like, this is Hannah. <laughs> let him boast in this, that he understands and knows me. That I am the Lord who practices steadfast love, justice, and righteousness in the earth. For the, in these things I declare, delight declares the Lord. So this is literally the exact same. This is, uh, Hannah's prayer is the application of this theology. Okay? <laughs> so anyone who doesn't, Hannah knew Israel's theology. Hannah knew true theology. Okay? She's not teaching theology. She's, she's, she's living it out in, our, in, in the prayer, okay? Um, this is theology in action. So, any, you know, some people are against theology and the study, you know, and other people are just let's do. And I always want to say, <laughs> yes, both. <laughs> let's study theology and let's apply it in life. And, and Hannah is applying that, that universal theological truth we see in the New Testament, we see in the Old Testament, both of those theological truths. Wow. Anyone might want to make a comment or we can continue? Okay, let's go. Let's go on here. Okay, so let's go now to the second part of verse number one. We have this, uh, uh, my mouth derides my enemies. That's the verb. So again, this would be a, an action.
the enemies are the object of the derision. And then the mouth is, of course, the mouth is the actor. And of course, we're, we're, I mean, we're looking at, we're looking at Hannah, Hannah's mouth. Now, when I look at this word, okay, let, let's go back to my Bible program. When I look at that word, derision means to mock, okay? So deride is mock, all right? That's, that's the translation, okay? The translation is um, my mouth mocks my enemies, okay? That would be one, that would be one, that would be one uh, translation here. So when I, when I look up this word here, that's how they translate it. The word means to, to be uh, enlarged, okay? Um, uh, literally to be enlarged, to be wide. So it's not the same word that's used in, uh, it's a different word used. So for example, in, so in Psalm 2 verse, uh, if everyone can see this here. Um, so Psalm 2 verse 4 says, he who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord holds them in derision. So derision is mockery. <laughs> but, but that's a it's a it's a different word. Okay. So um, different people have different reasons for how to understand this word of of derides the enemies. Um, and I think it's more, it's, I think that this is still, um, this is still, like I said, it's these, go ahead. Like boasting still? Yeah, I, I don't think it's a mockery. I don't think, I don't think it's, I don't, we should not use it as a mockery. So I don't know if I'd use the, the, the ride. Uh, let me see what other translations have. Let me see what other translations have real quick here. See if there's like your bragging theme, uh, theme. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. More, more uh, bragging or, or attacking them for their folly. You know, so it's maybe chastising them. I would uh, in the connection with boasting. To, like, why didn't you trust them, God? Like, what, like, what are you doing? You're being foolish. You know. Um, let me see. Let me just see what another. Let me see. Uh, do you have King James? What's the King James? Does it use the der deride? Uh, who are you, Henry? Okay. Yeah. So, so CSB, which is a good translation, that's the Southern Baptist version of ESV, has my mouth. My mouth boasts over my enemies. I actually really like that translation. N not because I'm just picking a translation that fits my theology, but I think the context. We're talking about boasting in the Lord. And I think it's, I think it's, it's, it's still in the context of the Lord. And now the, the boasting is directed at the enemies and almost saying like, look at my position. Why haven't you put your trust and faith in the Lord? An example of what she might be saying. Okay. So I like, I like this word boast. And then of course, and, and the cause, the cause. So this is why it's so this is why it's so important, okay? Again, the boasting of the enemies is not connected with herself, all right? This is why relationships are so important. What is the reason, cause, reason? The reason is... This is the actor. And then again, this is, what do I have in my notes here? Yeah, again, I have sphere. Again, I have sphere here. She's, the reason why she's boasting over her enemies because of the salvation, okay? Huge clarification, all right? And the problem, especially with leaders, and maybe you've seen this, some leaders are very arrogant. 
They talk about their ministry, what they've done, what they've accomplished. And we never take credit for our, our ministry. We should never take credit. Our boasting, our pride from one person only, the work, the person, the work of the Trinitarian God. That's it. Okay. And so here, huge clarification. She's not boasting in herself, in her. What, 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 could, what could have Hannah boasted in? Let's talk about what are some things that Hannah could have. Let's, let's get applicational here. Uh, or um, um, What are some things that Hannah could have boasted in? Uh, that God gave favor to her. Yeah. God, okay, so, so God's favor upon her. Now, okay, now I'm not looking for, I'm not looking for, for positive. I'm looking for, so yeah, so God gave favor, God's favor on Hannah. And what, so this is a, this is, a, what I'm trying to say is, um, I'm asking for potentially, what are some things, what we read about before, what you know about the story, what are some things that Hannah could have boasted in, but she did not? So this is not a positive. I'm, I'm trying to lay out some negative things. What are, what are some things she could have boasted? Um, I'll, uh, I'll give one, her faith, right? She could have boasted in, I had faith, right? I was the one that trusted in God, right? What are, what are some other things she could have boasted in? This close to the prophet. <laughs> yeah, so uh um her so let's let's uh her 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 uh her prayer her prayer which in, included um time sacrifice commitment Uh, tears, sorrow. What I'm trying to get at is that most, now some people would just talk about, look, I've, I've won 50 people to the Lord. I've won 100 people to the Lord. Some people do do that. But other people will boast in smaller things. They'll boast in their, maybe their prayer life. Maybe they'll boast in their, their, uh, their, um, uh, uh, commitment to church. I'm in church every week. You know, rain or shine, typhoon or bagyo or <laughs> or fiesta, right? What I'm trying to get at is is even though we're Christian and maybe we don't boast in those things that that are taboo, like we would never say um, you know, I fasted for five or two weeks. What have you done? Or I fasted every day for the past year. What have you done? or every other day, or once a week, for, you know, we, we wouldn't boast about those things, but we boast about other things, about our, maybe it's our ability to not watch any TV, or some type of uh, abstention from something, okay, just think about that, so th there's always that temptation, there's always that temptation, and here, the only thing, the only thing that we can brag about is the work of God, and the person of God, Okay. All right. Uh, who wants to go? Who wants to be the, who wants to try? Henry, do you want to say something? Go ahead. Hannah could have been disqualified. She could have been disqualified if a hint of boasting herself. Yes. Uh, yeah. In here, in Hannah's prayer, Samuel was more or less three year old. Okay. okay. During these three years, winning Samuel, and Hannah knew by faith that. It is God's working on the life of Samuel and herself yeah. because the prayer, the prayer alone, it was answered by God. Yeah. So everything was 
from God's action, not coming from her. Yes, yes exactly. Yes. Uh, so, during these three years in bringing up Samuel, then after that three years, he brings Samuel to the temple and offer it to God. That three years of taking care of Samuel, she can boast for herself yeah. that I have brought this child up, a healthy child for you. But yeah, no, not even, not even a hint of that. Yes. Mm -hmm. No, that's really good. So, um, in weeding Samuel, in in uh, in leading um, in in uh, in caring for him, <coughs> caring and preparing him, upbringing, he was proud for being. I just saw an extreme. I just thought of an extreme contrast between Eli's sons and the son she raised. <laughs> no doubt, there's probably Bethany. Can you just? I probably heard. Yeah, Bethany mentioned about there's a there could be there's a contrast between Samuel and also the sons of Eli. So that would be for another study <laughs> beyond the scope of this. Of this class, but excellent point, Henry. Thank you. That's a great. That's a great observation. That's a great observation there. Um, okay, let's let's uh, let's continue on here. Um, uh, let's go on to verse number two now. Who wants to try? Who wants to try verse number two? Who wants to try verse number two? Beth, you want to try it? You want to go? Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, the verb is, is. Okay. And none is the subject. Okay. None is holy. So um, then, what is what is holy functioning as? Um. Uh, predicate adjective. I don't know how. So you it's describe. so it's a, a description, right? Yeah. So this would be um, a description. Yeah. Now, if you notice here, okay, um, I I identify none as the subject, and the reason why I didn't identify as the actor is because there's no action. Okay. So the actor is only for action. And then if it's a state of being, like this, this type of verb here would be a, a state of being, a state. So it's, there's no one that is holy, okay? Um, and so if there's no action, you can just identify the subject as the subject, okay? Just to, just to be clear so that you're not referring to an actor when there's no action. Um, and then Bethany, so what, what's the other phrase that we have here? Like the Lord. Okay. Now, how is that functioning? Uh, it's describing holy. Right? Yeah. Um, yes. So the, the connection is none holy, and then so what type of what type of connection though? What type? You want me to pull up yeah. the list? Yeah. Okay. So here we're going to go to the list. Here we're going to go to grammatical relationships, and um, do you want to go to adverbial or adjectival? I think uh, adjective. Well, what? remember, we I know this because we just if it's describing an adjective, it's adverb. It's adverb. It's adverb. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so Beth, so here we go. Here's the here's the categories here, Beth. On the, on the screen, is it advantage or disadvantage? Well, I can't see the whole thing. I okay. Want to see the. Well, look at the keywords. Word like. Okay. Okay. So okay, I'm sorry. So here. All right. So. Um, the comparison. Yes, comparison. So you see that on the right there, everyone can see this here. We're looking for keywords. So there's a keyword, and then when we come over here, it's a comparison. So it's an so it, this is modifying holy, none are holy. Comparing to who? Comparing to the Lord. Comparison.
now now we're going to have i mean so really uh i'm just gonna for sake of ease we'll just the state of being will just be there is because in hebrew there's no there <laughs> that's an english uh is that would that be an adverb beth no it doesn't if I remember, it doesn't really have a function, a yeah, grammatical it's just, function. it's just there. So there is. Leave it's, it to English to do something yeah. like that. I don't want to make this more complicated than it is. Um, um, so uh, now let's let's do the next verse. Can you want to do the next verse, Beth? Okay. So you have. Um, for there is none besides you. So for is a connector word. Okay, yes. We circle that. Yeah. And then none is the subject again. Okay, good job. Is is the verb. None is. And then besides you is the phrase. Now what type of what's the what's the type of verb? Um being. Being, right? Being state state of being. Yeah. Okay, and then what's the, um, what is the what is the besides you? How is that functioning? There is none besides you. Let's look at our list. So um, can you is, can you zoom out? Some? Yeah, sorry. It could be association. There is none with you, besides you. It's, it's There's none other than you. None other than you. That. Maybe. So I chose concessive. Um, so let me, there's a, there, there's a word I should add here. Concessive in the sense of accept you. There is none except you. So, um, and I'm open to being corrected. I'm not, this is, this is my truth. None except you. Okay, so this is concessive. And so here is, here is the, What I'm looking at is the relationship between, between here and there. There is none holy like the Lord because, or the idea is, there is none except you in that category of holiness. Does that make sense, what I'm saying there? Um. Uh, in the category... of holy no one is there except the Lord is this, does that make sense what does that make sense what I'm saying so in the how about that thing like the separation is different from okay yeah so yeah so we could do so that you're saying the same thing that 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 um yeah so so if you want to think about separation yeah I, i'm open to thinking about that because separation is that remember holy so so holy no this is really good i i, I like what you're saying Holy means to set apart, right? So creation, God, set apart. Only God is set apart. So within this category, within this category of holy, only God is there. So yeah, if you want to do separation, I actually like separation. Maybe let, let me think about that. So 
let me think about that. So let's let's for right now let's do separation or a concession. I like that. Because to be holy is to be set apart. Was that what you were thinking? Great. I like that. Good job. Great. Let me think about it. I, I just, I, I'll need to check to make sure that it, the, the grammar fits, but I, I, I like it. I actually like it better than concessive. Both, I mean, both are true. No one is in the holy category except the Lord, so it's a concessive. Um, um, and it's also true that um, the Lord is set apart. Separation. So, the, the key, this is the key. So, so just remember, without, without getting bogged down with the details, this is the key here. As long as you understand what's being taught, what's being taught here is this, okay? As long as we understand what's being said are these two ideas, okay? All right? Now there was one thing that I did not, um, I did not do, and I was I got ahead of myself. So let's let's quickly come back here and let's just identify. Let's let's identify. So let's use the sentence relationships key and let's just identify the main the main uh, the main actions here. So here I'll just do the first couple couple to help to to set the pace. So here I look. The the the, uh, the verb is an action. So when I come back here to the different relationships, the first relationship, th this is a statement that describes an action or event that occurred. It is very common in narrative discourse. Okay, multiple li li multiple events link to form a scene. So I'm going to say, let's just unless there's a, a, a better argument, let's just identify this as an action, okay? The same thing here. I mean, these are just actions, okay? So, um, let's again do action. Line it up, okay? And then the relationship here would just be, um, I actually have expansion here. So let's look at why I chose expansion. So you have the, the main sentence and then we're looking at that relationship between the two sentences, okay? So uh, not only is, is Hannah's heart exceedingly joyful in the Lord, but she's actually lifted up and boasting in the Lord. So there's an expansion of an idea. Now you could also have progression. So, let, so let's look at both options here. Okay, I did not, have, did not put expansion in here yet. I need to add it. What, is, what does progression have? Progression have. Uh, each statement builds upon each other as the discourse moves towards a climax or a conclusion. So that would fit as well. Um, I like it. expansion is just your further, your further uh, describing some truth that's being told. You're expanding upon it. Okay, don't think too much into the word. I, I'm partially using the actual English definition and just trying to 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 make a relationship here. Okay, so I have here expansion. It could be an expansion or a progression. All right. And then, so actually what I have, this next is another action here. This is another action. So again, if, if you're looking at this, this is not very, it's not very complicated. Many times you're going to take, you're going to take the, the verb and just apply it. Okay. And I have now, now this is because is dependent. Okay. So, so really, That's one sentence, okay? So one complex sentence. So if, if you're being technical and including the whole thing, 
I would just go like that. All right. And then when you're looking at the when you're looking at these relationships here, I have actually here progression here. Because if you look here, you're moving from an internal internal action to outward, internal to outward. Okay, internal to outward. The joy that she's experiencing in her heart is is increasing her esteem. It's she's boasting in the Lord, and that's leading to an outward action. And so, one thing I want to think about is that. The inward always goes out. Uh, inward desire manifests itself in outward action. All right? That is a fundamental theological truth concerning anthropology, the study of man. Okay? And we see this all throughout the scripture. The way we see this in the scripture is this. How do we see this? I'm going to be drawing here. Imagine this is the... Uh, right? So... so. No, I, I, <clears throat> you like I just remembered something. What's that? Okay, just going back a little for a little further. Uh, the one when the the one when she mentioned my horn, something like yeah. that. Uh, was it my horn? Yeah, my horn. What's the full word verse for that? A place. My horn rejoices in the Lord. No? Yeah, my my horn. My horn is exalted in the Lord. Because I just remember. If Diba, it, 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 their culture, as far as the women are concerned, their value or self worth is measured by if they have babies, right? Yeah. Okay, so I probably my horn would more would speak mostly on self self worth. Yeah. 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 That's, that's a thought. But but remember this too. Remember what the blessing of we, uh, Henry, we cited this last week, right? The blessing of Abraham was that you were going to have a lot of children and in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. So having children was a sign of the blessing of God. Not having children was a sign of the curse. Yeah. So you're, I think you're, I think you're, so she, she's also experiencing the blessedness of God in having the child. Yeah. So, no, that's a good point. Um, but, but coming back to this drawing here, okay, what I want us to see here is that, is that um, the root, the root, whatever it is, the, you know, the root, uh, if this root is orange, an orange, I think oranges are on orange trees, but if the root is orange, the fruit guaranteed, it's going to be orange. Okay? You mean the seed? What? what do you mean the root? I'm saying the root. The seed which forms the root. Okay. Whatever is in the ground, the seed forms, will form the orange. You're never going to have, you're never going to have, <laughs> uh, you're never going to have a mango here. That, that's, that's antithetical. Antithetical. <laughs> you're never going to have, go ahead. How about grafting? How much the technology that they use? They can bear fruits in different trees. Well, grafting is a the the only time you can use grafting in scripture is the grafting of the Gentiles <laughs> into the olive tree. <laughs> but no, I, but, I, I'm just I'm just trying to fool around because I know I know. I know. <laughs> no, but what I'm trying to get out of here, what I'm trying to get out of here is that. From the inward, and Jesus talks about this, from the heart, the mouth speaks, okay? And so here we have an example that it works both ways, both in good fruits, both in the joy of the Lord. So someone, someone who says he's complaining, always bitter, always fighting, I have the joy of the Lord. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> 
it would come out, right? And so I, I do think that we're so afraid, we're so afraid to be fruit inspectors that we never inspect fruit. And someone is a thorn bush. And it's like, <laughs> no, I, you know, I produce mangoes. And you're like, okay, yeah, sure. So what I'm trying to see is here we have this, here we have this, again, practical. We have what's in the heart. When what, going back to what Kuya Henry said, the, the, the faith, the faith is the ultimate, the faith and trust in God is it, it cannot help but come out of the mouth, okay? All right, let's, um, what time is it? It's already nine o'clock. You oh. said we were going to finish this. <laughs> oh my goodness. But we're, 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 it, I think we can finish this on Thursday because we're <laughs> yeah. moving. We're moving at a good clip here. We, we got the context set. How about this? I'm going to finish verse two. How about this? Let's, you can work on your, you can work on your, you can work on your psalm. But if you have time, can you try to do some of these so that we can go through, we can go much faster on Thursday and then you can practice. So let's, I'm going to assign each person a verse. Okay. So Ray, you're going to do verse three. Henry, may you do verse, will you do verse four? Danny, can you do verse five? Danny, you there? Danny, Danny fell asleep. <laughs> Danny. Danny. He's not I, I think he fell asleep. Um, Bethany, uh, Be can you do verse five? Yeah. Okay. And then I'll do, I'll do the rest. And then I can always just, if we're running out of time, I can put, I can put it all on the screen. But here's the thing. This is what I want us to be thinking. So, so um, Ray will do verse three, Henry uh, verse four. Bethany verse five, and I'll do the rest. What I want to be thinking about is look at the rest of the passage and, and think about um, who's doing the action and um, what I gave a little bit of a hint as far as, as, far as the, 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 the main concept that's holding this all together, but, which is the God who judges the earth. Okay, and as we're looking, because some of these actions, it, you could think of this as being discriminate, right? He's just going to lift. He's just going to rescue the poor. the The rich are going to be brought down. the 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 one who is full of children is going to be lost. You could say that God's being discriminate, but I want I want us to be thinking about um, why is that not the case, and that, that God is actually being indiscriminate. He's being fair and impartial. And what is the connection with the judge of all the earth? So the key is in here. A hundred percent it's in here, okay? There's, there's, there's an act that God is doing that makes the actions fair and actually not discriminate or discriminating. It would seem discriminating, Diva. It seems to be discriminating. He's against the strong. He's for the weak. He's against the rich. He's for the poor. Okay, but I, but I, but I, 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 I want to reject that. That's a bad interpretation. And so to get down, why? Why is that? A, where is the proof that shows that's a bad and that God is actually impartial? Okay. All right. So the table is going to be set for Thursday. I'm sorry that we're a little bit behind. I, I really enjoyed this. I really liked our discussion on. The faith of, of Hannah and, and our background context, and I also think we're moving along here. Um, so I think we're 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 going deep. We're we're we're, we're going deep, but we're we're tilling the field, and um, you know this is in a small group in, in, in a church setting or with your small group. I mean this this study is really is really powerful. Um, so let's let's try to pray. Let's try to pray. And I want someone else to pray. I think Ray, Ray, can you, do you want to, do you want to give it a go of praying? Pick something in Hannah's prayer and let, let's try to pray following Henry's lead from last week. Just, just pick, Henry focused on, on verses one, pick, pick a verse and just kind of pray and, and, and use the verse in your prayer. Do, do you feel confident or I don't want to put you on the spot? It's okay. Okay, so this is a powerful sermon here still. Okay, thank you. Let's, let's close in prayer. Mm.
Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for the opportunity that you have given tonight to learn, to learn and truly appreciate the wisdom of your word. Lord, indeed, you are, there is nothing like you, Lord, you are in terms of comparison, nothing compares to you. In holiness, you are perfect in every way. And Father God, as far as um, you being God, there's really no no one that can truly put in place where you are right now because you are totally different from your creation. Your holiness exceeds above everything, Lord God. Your greatness. Indeed, Lord, that's why as far as what we've learned tonight, everything that the experience of Hannah truly shows his joy, her joy, her 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 pride in you, her exaltation of your goodness to her life. Indeed, Lord, this is this thing these are things that for believers who truly know you, who have truly experience your goodness. We cannot deny the fact that indeed, Lord, there's sweetness in everything and the experiences that you have given us. Truly, indeed, Lord, you're worthy to be praised and to be honored. So tonight we rest in the goodness of knowing that you are this God and you are a God, our God, Lord. We are just privileged, Lord. And we are really we are unworthy, O oh God, but yet you have chosen us. That's why we, we exalt you, Lord, and we just want to honor you for that. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.